Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we have a fun video. These are romance books that have characters who wear glasses. <laughs> Sorry for the ring light. Every time I wear my glasses I say that. There's nothing I can do. Next pair I get will be the blue light ones but these are not so I'm gonna try and keep my head as tilted as possible so it's not bothersome, troublesome for y'all. I actually love when characters in books have glasses as a fellow glasses person. I've worn glasses since I was like seven, I want to say, possibly, or eight, I don't know. Um, but I have horrible vision. I'm almost illegally blind <laughs> according to my optometrist, so I don't know. It just, I think it adds another level of, um, representation even though it's very slight so yeah and i also had a really hard time finding books like this i know like in a readathon i did um a couple years ago one of the prompts was read a book with a character who has glasses and i was like how am i supposed to figure that out i don't know if they're gonna have glasses unless they have it on the cover and sometimes they don't um and so i thought this would be perfect if you're gonna be in a readathon that has a prompt of a character who has glasses you can watch this video and get some recommendations. Um, or if you just want to read about characters with glasses, they're in here. <laughs> First, I have Rarely Matched by Emma Chase, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I adore this one, but I do recommend reading it in order. This is a book two in a series. And so this one's about Prince Henry, who is the Prince of West Co, a made up country. It's not real, but in the book, it's real, if that makes sense. You know, like think of Genovia. The Genovians think it exists. <laughs> But we know it doesn't. Or I didn't find out that Genovia actually didn't exist until way later on in my life. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> but basically, Henry wants to spice up his life. And so he does essentially ba The Bachelor, but Royal Edition. And he ends up falling for one of the contestant's sisters that she brings along with her as like a companion. So he doesn't end up falling for one of the contestants on the show. He falls in love with Lady Sarah. Lady Sarah is the one with glasses. And I am obsessed with her. I feel like she embodies me as a person. She goes through a lot. She has a lot of past trauma and everything and Henry kind of like helps her through that but also learns more about it and Henry becomes a better person by learning what Sarah has gone through and learning how to be an empathetic person because he wasn't necessarily a huge empathetic person until he really got to know Sarah and was like, wow, stuff like this is real. People go through crap. I understand now. And so I love this book so much. The romance in here is epic and amazing. And Sarah often is fixing her glasses and moving her glasses and Henry is messing with her and her glasses. I honestly think it's cute when a partner or character in a couple like messes with the other person or person's glasses or like, like teases them about it. Cause I think it's kind of cute as somebody who has giant glasses and like, I think it would be cute if a partner of mine did that. <laughs> Next, I have Fall With Me by Jennifer L. Armentrout. As you can see, the character on the cover has glasses. Um, so this is the fourth book in the Wait For You series. So this is about Roxy and Reese. And a couple months ago, they actually had a one night stand. Roxy works at this bar and Reese is one of the people who go to the bar and he's actually a police officer also. But Reese kind of like hurts her feelings because he like thinks like it was a mistake to like get with her that one night and she's been pining after him for years and so she's very hurt by this and is very mad at him. But then Roxy ends up getting some sort of threat by somebody and Reese is there to come back into the picture to kind of like help her and save her and figure out who this person is. So there's a little bit of a suspense aspect in here and I normally don't like that in romance because I don't care for romantic suspenses but this one actually didn't bother me which is saying something so I really enjoyed this one and Roxy does have glasses in here and she wears them quite often. Next I have a favorite of mine. We have A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. This is the second book in the Spindle Cove series. This is the romance between Minerva and Colin and it is so cute. Okay so Minerva actually like studies fossils and stuff and she really wants to go to this or is it like paleontology stuff? I, I think that's what fossils are. <laughs> um, so she wants to go to this like convention in I think it's London or somewhere um but she's a woman and she can't travel really on her own as an independent woman because back then if you can't travel on your own and so she asks Colin to kind of like pretend to be in engaged or pretend to elope with each other pretend to be husband and wife but he's actually going to take her to this convention <laughs> but there's like a little trouble because Colin was in a carriage accident with his parents years ago I think his parents ended up passing away from it. So he has a huge fear of carriages. So they have to find like unique ways to travel across the country instead of like being 
solely in a carriage because Colin can't do it. And so Minerva in here is really cute. She has spectacles that she's often moving and touching and falling off of her face <laughs> and Colin is teasing her about it and I think it's really cute. Um, but I really loved their relationship and their dynamic in here. It was really cute and I love the banter. The banter in here is amazing. Next, I have Rogues Rush In by Tessa Dare and Christy Caldwell. Specifically on this one, I just want to talk about the Tessa Dare novella. This is two novellas in a bind up, you know? And so the novella by Tessa Dare is His Bride for the Taking. I think you can purchase it on its own. Like I listened to this in the bind up through Libby as an audiobook. So, um, but I think you could just get His Bride for the Taking individually. So I believe our heroine in here is the one with the glasses, spectacles again. Um, so essentially this is about Mary and Sebastian and they've both been like pining after each other but they haven't said anything because Sebastian was best friends with her brother and her brother ended up passing and he thinks it would tarnish the relationship that he has with his best friend by marrying his best friend's sister. But then like Mary's kind of like in an arranged marriage and the groom essentially like doesn't show up and Sebastian doesn't want her to be humiliated so he takes her place, takes his place and is like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, even though I know your brother would not be happy about it, but I can't let you be hurt like this, so I'm gonna marry you. This one was really cute and really sweet, and I think it's a great novella by Tessa Dare. Another one of my favorites is Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. I adore this book so much. This is the romance between Theo and Addie. So Theo is a TA for this professor, and um, he is also, I really like his character. He's a swimmer, which you don't really read a lot about sometimes. He likes to like do like, I think he was a competitive swimmer and now he just does it for fun, like swimming, doing laps and stuff. As I used to be a swimmer, so I really like that in here. And then he also has a stutter and growing up it was really severe, but um, he's kind of worked, I think, with like speech therapy and everything. And he's gotten it a little bit more under control, except it really comes out when he's nervous, especially talking with girls. And so Addie in here is one of these students in the class he's a TA for. And the moment that she sees Theo, she's immediately like, I want him, I'm going after him. So it's exactly what she does. And Theo is such a mumbly bumbly mess and he's so stinking cute. And like Addie is so patient and kind with him. We also go really slow in the physical department because Theo is innocent, if you get what I mean. <laughs> I love how they take it slow just day by day and they don't rush into things as somebody who is not a rusher in that department. I really appreciate when that's in a book sometimes. Theo is the one in here with glasses. He is super, super, super cute and just sweet. If you love a sweet hero, this one is definitely one you should pick up. Next, I have a unique one. We have Fire in Her Dreams by Ruby Dixon. This is a book number nine, a part of the Fireblood Dragon series. This is an alien romance series where uh, one day on Earth, like a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through and decimating the whole world and then there's only a few human survivors here and there in like camps um and so our heroine in here her name is jenny and she ends up getting these dreams about this man like hearing this man's voice and just so happens to be the dragon in here and he can like mind speak to her if that makes sense and appear in her dreams and they become mates and as they're it's really funny as they're like flying through like the rundown earth essentially because he can shift to a human form i forgot to say that like it's an alien romance they can shift into human forms or dragons that could shift into humans um so as they're flying through like the ruins of the earth they go to like stores and stuff to find food and shelter and all that stuff and they come across some glasses because he's like talking about how he can't really see all that clearly and she's like hmm let's see if some glasses will help you and so there's this big dragon man who has glasses and every time he shifts he has to give like the heroine his glasses to like take care of so cute. Next, I have some Chloe Lee's books. I have Ever After Always, which is book three in the series. This is the marriage and trouble romance between Aiden and Freya. Aiden and Freya have been married for quite a while um, and they really want to start having a family, so having a baby. Um, but Aiden has very troublesome anxiety that is weighing a lot on him, especially when it comes to finances and making sure he provides for his family and for the baby that they're going to have hopefully one day. And so he becomes really anxious and kind of by doing that and focusing really hard on work to provide for his family, he shuts out his wife and his wife is done. And he doesn't really communicate to her what is going on, what's wrong and like why he's acting the way that he is. And so she gets very frustrated and essentially kicks him out of the house. And this whole book is about him learning about what he did wrong and how to deal with his anxiety and how to grovel <laughs> to Freya and realize what he did wrong. And that just because you are gonna have a baby, that doesn't mean that you should dedicate your whole time to providing for the family you need to be present in it as well 
or you're gonna lose it. Aiden in here is the one with glasses. Um, I really loved his character, especially when it comes to the talk of anxiety. As somebody who has anxiety, I really appreciated that. Um, and I love Freya in here too. She's a beautiful mid-sized woman. Again, as a mid-sized woman, I really appreciate that too. Um, and I adore this couple. And this is one of the best marriage and trouble romances I've ever read. Another one is With You Forever by Chloe Lee. This is the one following after after ever after always. Dang, that one's a tongue twister for me. Um, but this is the romance between Axel and Rooney. I'm pretty sure Axel's the one with glasses. I don't know why it's slipping me which one of these characters has glasses or not. Could be both, honestly. Um, so, but I do know that one of them has glasses, okay? So I know that's in here, I know it. <laughs> Rooney in here is going through some health issues and recently she has come to a point where she needs to take a break from her life and like her lawyer, big city life. And so she decides to go to the cabin that the Bergman family has offered to her to stay in for a little bit for, as a little vacation. But then she doesn't know that Axel is already at the cabin trying to like, kind of like renovating it, making it a little better. And so the two of them end up finding each other at this cabin. They're like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And things commence. There might be a marriage of convenience in here. I love this one. We have a hero who has autism. We have a heroine who has ulcerative colitis, I'm pretty sure. We love a girl with the tummy issues, honestly, which I rarely see in books because I got tummy issues. I really related to Rooney, so. <laughs> Next, I have Queen Takes Rose by Katie Robert. This is the sixth book, I believe the last book in the Wicked Villain series. So this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, so Aurora in here gets in a contract with M Mal, Maleficent. Um, I think that's what they call her, Malone. No, it's Malone, not Mal. Why was I thinking Mal? What am I thinking of? The Descendants movies or something like that? Whatever. So Malone is the Maleficent character in here and um, Aurora gets in a contract with her. Aurora is essentially Malone's property for a certain amount of time and Malone gets to do whatever she wants with her. Aurora is consenting to this, by the way. And Aurora may be in this position and accept this thing going on with Malone because she wants to unalive her for specific reasons, but then she falls in love with her, obviously. Malone in here is the one with glasses. It's also an age gap. Malone is quite older than um, Aurora. So, and yeah, it's also a sapphic romance. So love that. And lastly, I have Married by Morning by Lisa Kleypas. This is the fourth book in the Hathaway series. This is the romance between Catherine and Leo. I love this one. So Catherine has been the governess to two of these sisters in the Hathaway family for quite a while. She wears spectacles. Leo, who's like the sisters to the girls she's got the governess to, often teases her and bangs with her and just like gets under her skin. And like, this is their romance. It's really cute and really sweet. I love how Leo kind of like sheds his walls, you know, like in the beginning of the series, Leo is a very damaged hero. Um, he is basically an alcoholic. He lost the love of his life. She died from a sickness and he is grieving over it. Um, and so this book takes place a little bit later. Like he's, he's gone through much of the grieving process and he's gotten a little bit more on his own feet, you know? And he kind of has come to grips with what has happened to him in his life. Um, and so Catherine here kind of like sparks love back in him again. And it was so cute and so sweet. The banter in here is 10 out of 10. If you love bantering in romances, this one is definitely one you should read. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances with characters who have glasses. Um, please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a glasses emoji down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.